Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I found some, uh, I found a couple up in Washington State that uh, are in pretty close competition with uh, Jeremiah Payne and uh, Samantha. Uh, the uh, similarities are remarkable, uh, but this guy's a little more advanced. Uh, CPS has already taken his kid and uh, <clears throat> it's not looking good. I'll show you a few clips and you'll understand why. I want to know why you're taking my son. Please. Right now we're going back to the office. Then why are you taking? Why are the police here to take my son? A no. Uh, why is the court order? Can you tell me? Isaiah, Isaiah no. I'm not here to this. No, I know you're just. But that's not okay. Have I have rights. I have rights. I have rights. Please help. Kayla, please stop trying to take my son. I didn't stop. do nothing wrong. I left a safe place. Stop yelling. I left stop a safe place. Stop. Why? Stop. Why is my breathe. son being breathe. taken? Breathe. Just a little backstory. Uh, this guy and his, the mother of the child, are both homeless. They were living in a safe place, homeless place up in uh, Washington, where you can park. Uh, but they left there and they moved down to wherever this is. I think they're living in that uh, pop-up camper over there. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, that's what's going on. And just the way he's acting in front of his son kind of gives you the idea. We got Jeremiah on our hands. Heather, you. Taylor, look at me. Why are you taking my son? Why are you taking my son? Why? Now we'll take a listen to the mother of this child. Uh, I don't have a picture of him, but this is a short that she uploaded with some rap music and, you know, her priorities. Anyway, next. Okay, I'm going to have to stop and uh, read this because there's no sound in this. And to whom it may concern, my name is... Kayla Sample. I'm currently homeless. The story started in July of last year and I fear it will end in my son's death. Doesn't say how. I sent mass emails. This first one and second will start with the same words. Something must be done. If it's, begin if it's being done to me, actually, I know countless others, it is and it has happened to us as well. It's about their kid being taken from them for not being able to provide for them. But let's move on. All right, myself and many others have been discriminated against based on different disabilities. The harassment, bullying, intimidation, the theft, destruction of property, and smear campaign started about the middle of August at Safe Park, 1504 Northwest 138th Avenue, Vancouver, Washington, 98684. It's a private park where they tow you off. Wait, what? What? Well, why would you park there if they tow you off? And really, if you don't become their pet and silence your rights, but the community thinks it's a safe place for the homeless to park. Makes no sense. The new camping parking ordinance for the homeless states that I can sleep, camp, park on any public land from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. as long as I don't set up shop, leave a mess, move into the spot. The homestead law does work on individuals who, are, who use the vehicles as their home. This cannot be taken required money to obtain a Leon on it. I don't know what the frick she's talking about. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a bunch of nonsense and gobbledygook. But anyway, they're both hom homeless from what I can tell. I can't really tell. I don't know what happened before all this started because there's nothing about it. I don't. I think there's a lot more to this than what, uh, what they're putting on the internet. And uh, it, it, it kind of reminds me of Jeremiah Payne and his story. Let's see if I can find one more of her talking to CPS on the phone. Oh, um, I don't know if you know or if they told you, but he has a severe separation anxiety from me. And I do have a, uh, a recorded voice uh, message from CPS saying that I am allowed to have phone calls with my son. And they have not allowed me to speak to him. And so I, I don't, you guys keep giving me updates or giving me, yesterday I was giving the runaround four times. Um, and so, like, I just hope that my son was is there. Um, the other question is, why why was he admitted under a fake name, and then now he is under his real name? Um, I don't know. Sometimes with the registration process, there's just a delay in getting the name updated. If, uh, you know, when adults come in, they have an ID with them usually. Well, Isaiah's and in the system. He's been in the system. I've, been, I've lived here before. And, yeah, and actually, and registration so called me yesterday. That's another question. Why did registration call me to... Um, Ask me to check him in and consent to treatment if CPS has custody of him. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not part of the registration team, so I'm not sure. Okay. 
protocol was for. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is they asked me to consent to treatment, but I don't want to consent to treatment if I don't know what the treatment plan is. I don't want to put him in danger. I want to give him the correct help. But then if he's he's not getting the correct help, I don't want to consent to treatment if that makes sense. So when I called yesterday um, to, to say yes or no on the registration, they sent me over and then I was hung up on him again. So... I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to consent to treatment because I don't consent my son even being out of my home right now. Right, right. I suspect the child being taken has something to something about priorities. Uh, the parents apparently uh, smoke dope every day, all day long, and she's going to say it here in a minute. And it's a pretty pretty tough way to uh, take care of your kid when you're always hammered. Uh, I got nothing against weed. I mean, weed's fine, but she'll she's going to tell you she smokes weed from the time she gets up till the time she goes to bed non-stop all day long. I don't know how she can afford that. Maybe she can't afford, maybe she can't afford to buy food for the kid. I don't know. She never gets into that part of it. So then the other question is, can have you guys but made recommend have a point of contact with, with them? I don't. They unfortunately they do not contact me, no text messages, nothing. Um since for for the last um about month and a half I have not had any communication other than police showing up to take my son. Uh, okay. So I, I don't know other than my son is there. I've been advocating for him, begging, like doing everything to, um, to, to see how to get him home because his issue is he's got separation anxiety and then his ADHD is really bad. She said earlier in the video that she wasn't allowed to pick him up. Uh, so apparently the father has custody and he lost custody as well. Uh, that didn't work out. So I don't, I still don't know what's going on with this person. So when I was in Detroit, like there's numerous times, like I, they called CPS on uh, Washington at a, a FTDM with a BRS facility. I put my daughter in an institution and gave up my rights to get her mental health help. And um, I had a, a wrap around with her and I was in the hospital with tubes down my throat because I had COVID and I just found out I had COVID, but I don't miss meetings regardless if I'm dead or not. Those are my kids. And um, I had my son there. I was waiting for a babysitter um, and I got a CPS call because I was at the hospital with COVID and my son was there. And, um, and so I told them that, and then the lady from the BRS, she's like, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have homes. But there's a wait list, da, da, da. And so this place in Oregon does not have a wait list. They have a master's degree. They work with the state police, all of that. And, um, and there you go. I mean, and, and they will take them there for children and adults. So th there's a resource as well. Um, if you guys have to hold them any longer, I don't, I don't see how long you guys can hold them without... Um, you know, how long are you guys supposed to hold him before CPS, like CPS coming next week? Or, I mean, how long do you guys keep him in the ER before you have to admit him or before you have to seek other services? Cut a lot of this video out because it's just her non-stop talking, uh, throwing out things. Uh, I've probably even cut out the part where she says she smokes weed from the time she gets up to the time she goes to bed. I don't know why she told CPS that, but she did. And uh, it sounds to me like they're playing the, playing the system here. They figured out how to play the system. As long as she doesn't have custody of the kid, the state is getting the checks every month instead of her. Uh, that may have something to do with it, but I don't know because she doesn't say what started all of this. Never utters a word of why. Yeah, so at this point, it's, it's as if it's just DCYF is acting as the guardian, so we just wait until DCYF is able to pick him up. Um, we um, Is that not negligence? We would not most likely um, admit somebody who doesn't need medical care, so they typically remain in our emergency department, and this is just kind of generally speaking, not necessarily about his situation, but just generally, um, and, and you know, because we can't release a minor um, without right. uh, the guardian. Right, and then they're acting as the guardian. Okay, so then my other... That's about all I'm going to play of the video. It's, uh, it's just way long, and it's her on the phone most of the time, so, you know, I think we've heard enough. Anyway, it would sure be interesting to find out what initiated all this CPS contact. Apparently something happened, but they don't want to talk about it. I've watched, they've got like five videos on their channel. I've watched them all, and I can't figure out why the kids were uh, separated in the first place. Anyway, I'm going to keep an eye on them. Y'all have a great day. Love y'all. Bye.